All right, um, I'm building this cedar strip canoe here in the North House ADP studio, and this is going to be for the um, local chamber of commerce, the Cook County Chamber of Commerce. It's going to be like raffled off in their summer fundraiser. Um, but I thought I'd just kind of show you guys what's involved with putting a strip on a cedar strip canoe. It's a multi step process. Um, I'm using square edge strips. Um, some people buy um, bead and cove strips that have like a, a bead on one side and a cove on the other uh, narrow edge and that helps lock the strips together a little bit easier but um, uh, I make my own straight sided strips which is a little which is a little cheaper and um, not that much harder and it's actually kind of more fun in my opinion um, and uh, so um, the other thing is that right now I'm starting to do this um, uh, pattern down the center line, which um, is uh, like a um, herringbone kind of uh, pattern. And so this will sort of continue this back and forth zigzag all the way down the center of the boat. Um, so that kind of starts once you get right around this um, turn of the stem where the boat kind of starts to become flat. You can kind of see like after this one, I started herring boning. Um, whereas down in the lower part of the boat, you just run all the strips off the stem. So, um, yeah. Let's see, I'll just walk around some of the tools that I have here. Um, stapler, I'm stapling all these strips down. There's some other ways to do it, but stapling is sort of the quickest and like most known way. Little block plane. Um, and a couple chisels I keep handy, um, just uh, for trimming things. I've got this um, pointy chisel that I made uh, from an old chisel that I got at an auction and just a, just a normal chisel here. Those things, and then um, up here, uh, I have this little um, jig that I made. It's just a small miter box that is the perfect size for a strip to go into, and so this allows me to just cut a uh, perfectly 90 degree um, cut on the uh, strips. Um, so I've got that, and I kind of use the backside for other cutting. And I use it with this little small size Japanese dovetail saw, uh, which is a pull saw, and a um, little straight edge, and a little razor blade. So um, the first thing I do when I do this is I come and I'm trying to get it to fit first into this um, herringbone. So I, I need to cut an angle like this onto the edge of this. And the way I do that is I start by finding this point where the previous strip has the sort of top edge touching the strip on this side. And I put a little mark there so I can see it easier. And then I hold my strip in the right attitude where it needs to, where it needs to live and I, Take that little mark there and I transfer that straight up. So that's a mark there. And then I come over here and I find that point right there where the other edge is meeting the other edge, kind of. And I bring that up. And then I take my little short straight edge and I come to my little my little work surface here. And I will connect that point and that point with my little short straight edge. And then I take my little razor blade and I go over that a couple times kind of score that line because it's not an easy line to cut and it'd be nice if it was the same every time I could make a jig for it but it's always a different angle so I kind of have to describe it every time and then I I don't think everyone does it like this but I kind of come in at an angle and um, just take a little wedge off of this like that with my razor blade. And that just gives me a little place for my saw to live. 
And then I'll just finish this cut with the saw. And you could probably do this whole cut with a razor blade, just kind of pushing through, it's only a quarter inch thick. But this seems to be the method that I like. So now we'll um, bring that to the end and see how it fits. That's actually pretty good. There's two things going on here. One is that I'm still on my stem on this side. And eventually, so this stem is a little bent piece of wood that in the front of the boat, all of the strips land on um, to give them support. And once you get past the stem, it's always a little bit easier to get this thing closed up a little bit. Um, so it's more like that. But right now, this bottom edge is resting on the stem a little bit, holding, it, holding things up. So I do two things um, here. One is I'll take, um, take my little pointy chisel and I'll just kind of get in there a little bit and shave the stem down right in that area where this plank is gonna land. Try to create a slightly flatter landing for that. And that will help that a little bit. And then the other thing that I do is I take this strip over to my table, my workbench, and I'm just gonna put I use this block plane for this, not totally sure. You could use a smaller plane, but I just put a little, bevel on this edge of the plank. And that will also help the plank sort of not stick up like that. Um, you can see already it's making a much tighter seam there so plus I can put a staple right on that and that will help hold it down like I did there so I might be okay for now and then the um, next thing I do is I hold kind of pre-bend this into its place this is the trickiest part of this. And I'm walking down the boat as I sort of bend this into its place. And I do this kind of to get the light. And I always make sure that I have my pencil in my ear or in my shirt when I'm doing this. And I'm going to need to make a mark. So I'm holding this in place, trying to get the perfect length. That's okay. And I'm coming walking along and I see that the strip is going to break on um, this little frame or mold station mold so I'll put a little mark in the middle of that station mold and then I will take my um, little miter box that I made here put the strip into it and I'm gonna cut a perfect 90 degree angle right where that mark is. So that way the strip will end right here and you can see the way we do this is we just have 90 degree butt joints um, 90 on all the strips and that's how we join them together. It's not really a Strong joint, but um, this is just for aesthetics because these strips are going to get covered in fiberglass and that's what's going to make it strong. Um, the last thing to do is I have these little cutouts that I've made to support the strip so I can um, just bring these over to this side of the boat. So so they're a little bit in a better, better working position. I just clamp them into place and I put the strip in them like that. 
And this is one of the last drips that's going to need a bevel. But I was talking before about I was talking before about um, how some people use a bead and cove by get bead and cove strips to lock these strips together. Since I don't do that, I have to put a little bevel on this part of the plank, um, and that allows the planks to sort of close their and not have a seam, not have a gap on the outside edge of the seam. And I um, just use these little cheap thumb planes um, to do that. And right now you can see the boat right here, where I'm, I'm almost to the end of where I need to put the bevel on. Once I get torso to the middle of the boat, the boat's really flat here and you kind of stop having to do the bevel. But especially like down in this part of the boat, I had to put a lot of bevel on these planks to get them to sort of sit pretty tight. So this one I'll do a light bevel, so just a couple of passes. And it's kind of Now the reason I use these sort of small planes here is because they're, they're easier to use in a way. Um, but when I was doing that end grain and planing on that angle on the tip of the plank, the strip, I used my low angle block plane because it's easier to sharpen that blade. And when you're working on the end grain of the wood, I like to have a really sharp blade. And, um, these cheap planes, these little fingered planes are handy, but they never are quite as sharp, and so I don't like to use them on the end grain. I use that bigger plane on the end grain. Check everything, make sure it looks good. Probably could hit that a little bit more, but it's um making a pretty nice seam all the way along the length, so I think it's gonna be good. At this point, sometimes I just use a little um, block of wood with sandpaper is another thing that I'll do. If you don't have a block plane and you want to work on this end grain, just do that. It's a good way to sort of touch up your sharp, sharp end of the board here. But I think that will help me get this a little bit more, a little bit more flush in there. Now I'll glue it down and staple it down. So take glue. This is sort of the stupid part. Here it comes, I think. Um, yeah, great.
Okay. Um, then it's good practice to take a little piece of wood and flatten out your glue. I'll admit I don't always do this, but since I'm demonstrating, I'll use best practice. And if you have like irregular spots like here where you have these little beads, this will help have your glue joint be a little cleaner. The other thing I want to do is make sure you get a little glue right on the stem and in on this mating surface of the other plank. You have a nice amount of glue on the stem there. And you take your stapler and I've, used, I've learned through trial and error that the best stapler to do this with is the um, just the old Aero T90 stapler, which is the stapler that you see in most hardware stores. Um, and But there's a lot of new staplers on the market that are like heavy duty, they say like heavy duty or extra strength. And they are too powerful for this application because this stapler leaves the staples just flush or even a little proud sometimes. And those really strong staplers will just sink the staple deep into the wood and it will make pulling them out a pain in the butt. <laughs> And this gets trickier and trickier as you go to the middle of the boat. These pieces of wood are sort of taking this curve, which looks really cool, but it's just hard to, you have to muscle them into this curve a little bit. And then I go back to the tip. I usually like, it's kind of, it's too hard. There's too much muscle I'm trying to do um, to get the tip in the beginning. So I kind of go back and do that last. Uh-oh, I think I probably just ran out of staples, but you can imagine there's a staple there and that'll be good. So that's all. Thanks guys. <laughs>